Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain League Journal. I'm Paul Larson, hosting this week for Tom Halleck, whom you'll see later in the show. Behind me looms Whiteface Mountain, one of the more majestic of the Adirondack Mountains. Our show this week looks at people of the Adirondacks and places to visit in the summer. In the Essex County town of Lewis, you'll find roadside markers that were just unveiled to honor a young woman who changed the course of history by dedicating her life to the fight to give women the right to vote. The signs that have been placed along the highway in Lewis and on a hilltop behind the Congregational Church are dedicated to Inez Milholland, who was buried in the churchyard. Inez, who was born on a farm that is now the famed Meadowmount School of Music, became the face of the suffrage movement a century ago. On the 100th anniversary of New York State granting women the right to vote, the pivotal role she played in leading suffragists to victory has been brought to life in a documentary by filmmaker Martha Wheelock. And Wheelock talks about making the documentary with Mountain Lake Journal host Tom Halleck. Welcome, Krista. Nice to be here, thank you. Why did you decide to make this film about Inez Milholland, Voice of Ain? Well, she was always a very dramatic figure in my uh, studies of women's study, suffrage history um, because she was that great woman on the white horse, but nobody really knew anything about her. Um, and uh, so she became something that I became, was fascinated with. And to, to discover that she actually died working in a campaign for women's right to vote. And of course, there's the Martin Luther Kings, there are other martyrs. Uh, whether she was an actual martyr or not, I could discuss that with you. But uh, she basically gave her life at the tender age of 30 to make sure that women got the right to vote. So she was an inspiration to you? Absolutely, yeah. And people always knew the woman on the white horse, but they didn't know her name, they didn't know what she did, they didn't have any in inclination of what, what it cost women for 72 years to win the vote. It was 1913 that it really right. was in the national spotlight, and there was a big uh, parade through Washington. And that's where this, this image, this iconic image of Vinez on the white horse, mm -hmm. there was some violence at that parade, yes. uh, but it seems that the the story and image that got picked up by newspapers across the country was, was her on her white horse. Yeah. Just imagine 1913, there was no, there was no internet, there was no, there were very few telephones even, uh, that that group got organized from all over the country. They had, they had teachers, they had nurses, they had people from other lands where they could get the vote. It was an amazing accomplishment. So that was or, their moment. That was an cr incredible moment. And because there was violence, they got press. And because Inez and the women who re organized that, Alice Paul, did it as a pageant. They did it as a spectacle. They did it to make, you know, a flurry. And the press loved it. And it went on for a long time. The press talked about how many women were injured and how, what barbarians they, the men were, throwing bottles at them. So it was, a, it was grand. And they, they, they took that moment of publicity and start, 1913 began a real crunch. Thrust into the national spotlight, but Wilson and the Democrats ignored them. Oh, yes. In 1916. Yeah. Inez headed out west. Mm -hmm. By then, 11 states out west could vote, and the right. idea was to get those women to unite, to boycott Wilson, to boycott the Democrats, to, to, to move the, the issue forward. Mm -hmm. Wilson paid no attention to them. They, they marched, they petitioned, nothing happened. So um, the only way that we can sometimes get a, get a wedge in is to say to the political party in power, we're not putting up with that anymore. So. But Inez had captured the imagination of the American people. The American press, for sure, was beautiful. She was stately, and, and, and this rubbed her in a, in a way against her grain because she was an educated, brilliant speaker, a bright, uh, a very, very progressive woman, and yet she was being known for her beauty. But they said, you know what? If it'll attract the men, you go out there on the road, you will be the, you, you'll be our four girl, you know, the one, the one that goes out at the head, and the men will all come to hear you, and they will bring their wives who have, who have the right to vote. So she saw this, and she, she allowed this to happen, even though she was a bit uncomfortable with it. And I think that we, we can, you know, you can dissect how beauty and the pageantry of beauty is used to get people's attention and to get 
rights and to, to do all those kinds of things, why we use celebrities today. So yes, yeah, she did uh, all of those speeches and, and she started out with, with bad health, but it didn't matter. I'm gonna go on the road, this is my, I'm, I'm dedicating my life to this. And she said right from the beginning that she was gonna dedicate her life to women's suffrage. She had pernicious anemia, she had tonsillitis, she had an infection in her teeth, uh, things that today probably wouldn't have killed her. But um, pernicious anemia uh, is a, a vitamin B12 um, deficiency and they couldn't even figure out how to do transfusions. So it was a very, it was a very dramatic end. And she didn't actually die when she fainted uh, and passed out in Los Angeles. It took her 30 days. And in those 30 days before she died, the press every day would have a, a wire. Inez Milholland doing better. She's had a transfusion. And of course, then she got worse and worse. They were fascinated by this. So did she become a martyr? Well, if a martyr means that I or somebody gives their life or stands by their conviction of a cause and in the so doing uh, is used for their statement of issues, I think she is. They used her death as much as they did her life. This is a woman who died for your right to vote. President Wilson, what are you gonna do now? And just within a couple of weeks after her death, the protest started at the White House. That's right. The first group to pick at the White House and the first group ever to go through hunger strikes in our country. And the movement yeah. gained traction. So but by 1920, the states ratified it. The 19th Amendment absolutely. became a reality. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Glorious. <laughs> Has history forgotten her though in a way and is that part of the reason you decided yes, to make the documentary? Yes, it is, yeah, right. Um, I'm a former teacher and um, when I asked my students in high school, what do you know about uh, the women's suffrage movement? Well, they might have known about Seneca Falls or maybe Susan B. Anthony, but if I ever mentioned the name Inez Milholland or did they know about this great figure on the horse, um, nobody knows that. So how can folks see your documentary? I'm distributing this film free of charge uh, on my website, inezmilholland.org, because I want people to have it. I want them to take it into their schools and their libraries. And that's what I want to happen. I want every American to know about her. And that's why I'm giving away this film for free on my website. They just have to go in and request a copy.